So we're heading upstate on a little bit of a road trip and I've been noticing the infrastructure more and more for this new surveillance state, you know, the new world we're going to be stuck living in. And there's three things that I'm consistently noticing uh, across all highways and those are the new LED lamps, the cameras, as well as the five grams towers. Uh, which purpose each of these serve, I mean, you know, we can assume the reason they have cameras at every exit, at every single toll bridge, at various intervals, is so they know where everyone is at every point in time. If you drive on the highway, if you get off at an exit, they're going to have you on the camera. What's the purpose of the five grams towers? Outside of radiating people, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Maybe they're going to say that the five grams towers are for new driving infrastructure but to me the only thing they're doing with these five grams towers is specifically targeting highways and commuters uh, to give them radiation poisoning consistently throughout the day you know you get radiated in your home uh, with your various wi-fi devices you get in your car with your cell phone and on the highway you get radiated at work you get radiated just constant levels of low level radiation poisoning the entire day and the LED lamps, I, th I think they're dual purpose. I think the LED lamps have both a Wi-Fi signal as well as a, a surveillance aspect. And, and we really can't get away from these, these five grams towers. Um, you know, these are some of the highest levels I've seen today. Uh, levels on my uh, Wi-Fi meter are extreme anytime I'm near one of these towers. And, you know, driving on the highway, there's one of these five grams towers every mile or so. They've made sure to set up this infrastructure frequently enough on the highway so that pretty much every single point in time you're driving, you're getting radiated. Uh, so if any of you guys are handymen or know, like, what material I should use to uh, shield my car, let me know. I was going to buy some aluminum mesh and basically coat the interior of the windows and the car in aluminum mesh. I'm not sure what type of, uh, like, I don't know if I should staple it to the upholstery or, or what I can use to attach aluminum mesh to the upholstery of the car, but it seems like the only safe thing to do at this point is to EMF proof your car. Um, you know, with all of these towers set up so frequently, you know, there's another one right up here. There's another tower right up here. There, There's no escape. Every, every, every quarter mile, every half mile, whatever they need to do, they have antennas set up everywhere to make sure you're constantly being radiated as you're traveling on the highway. You know, not only are we seeing these five grams towers, uh, we're seeing a lot of cameras and we're seeing a lot of LED lamps. Uh, the cameras and the LED lamps are definitely more common, closer to the bridges and the intersections and uh, higher traffic areas. So this is a safe and sound classic EMF meter. Uh, it's the most affordable meter that I know of. Uh, it's only around $200, and it doesn't measure specific numeric values of Wi-Fi, it's just ranges. Uh, the reason you want specific numeric value is to identify this, the actual source, you know, because certain devices emit certain frequencies. Uh, so your living area, you want it to be green, ideally flashing green, and your sleeping area, you definitely want it to be uh, flashing green. Uh, usually in a city or suburban area you can only achieve that with a faraday cage or shielding or being very aware of the surrounding radio frequency devices uh, so i wish i was sponsored by these guys and you might not be able to find this online uh, but this is one of the more reliable meters uh, that i've been using here's one of the cameras cameras on the big pole some cameras coming up here you guys can't really see it there's one like right there but, but the cameras are incredibly easy to recognize. Got some LED lamps over here. The cameras all look really similar. It's a big steel pole, and then at the top, it looks like some type of small dangling lantern. Uh, but as you get up close, it's very clear that it's, uh, it's a camera. Uh, you know, it's the cameras you typically see in bars and restaurants that have the, like, the 360 degree view and and they can zoom in and see super detailed stuff. I've been driving for half an hour, and the majority of this car ride, the Wi-Fi levels have been moderate to high. You know, in the past, I never had to worry about Wi-Fi radiation on the highway unless I was driving in Manhattan. 
And, and that's probably part of the reason that New York is kind of the center stage for this uh, new worldwide nonsense. Because New York has an incredibly high EMF Wi-Fi environment in itself. So once you add the new Wi-Fi infrastructure on top of that already high New York radio wave environment, that would hypothetically be where people have the most extreme reactions to the Wi-Fi. But now that they're setting up these towers on every highway in every city, now you can argue that people are going to have more and more and more undiagnosed, unknown issues that are attributed to radiation poisoning. Level, levels are high right now. I don't even see where the antenna is. I don't even see where the, I think I think that might be the antenna, but that doesn't even look like a, doesn't even look like a five grams antenna. It just looks like a, a smaller antenna. So so what's the reason? Well, what's the reason there's such high levels of radio frequencies on the highway? Why are we being bombarded with radio wave radiation when we're driving, when we're commuting? Why do they have so much infrastructure set up? So pleasant surprise, uh, for the first time on this road trip for about 10 minutes, I haven't really seen uh, any towers or too much, uh, too much radio frequency. Some moderate interruption here and there, but nothing extreme. So this is a magnetic field reader. And Magnetic fields come from devices that are very high power sources. Uh, unlike radio wave frequencies, magnetic fields do not travel too far. Also unlike radio wave frequencies, magnetic fields cannot be blocked. Um, the only way you would be able to shield yourself from a magnetic field is if you encased yourself in like hundreds of pounds of iron or steel. Uh, what happens with magnetic fields is you can displace the field nearby a source with a large amount of metal, uh, but you cannot physically shield the source. So, you know, I knew the Wi-Fi 5 grams towers were for radio waves. I knew the cameras were for surveillance. You know, but I was unsure of some of these poles and these LED lamps. So using this meter where there's more LED lamps, more towers, more infrastructure, you know, wherever there's like a, a toll booth or, you know, a major highway intersection point, it appears that the magnetic field levels are exceedingly high. So I've been getting readings of like four, five, six hundred, and it's, it's not crazy, crazy high, but it does appear that there's a magnetic field issue that, that comes hand in hand with these uh, street lamps. Do I think they're intentionally using magnetic fields to blast people? I, I don't think so. I don't think it's a, a practical or realistic thing to do, but I'm sure if you're sitting you know, at certain points in traffic for longer periods of time in these higher infrastructure areas, especially where there's you know, more and more power lines and stuff, you're gonna be getting hit with magnetic fields as well. I mean, if we point this reader at, at where the street lamps predominantly are, you know, we're getting decently high readings, you know, going up to three, four, five hundred. So essentially when you have these rows and rows and rows of LED lamps on both sides of the highway, think of it as like a radiation tunnel. That's exactly what they're capable of doing. I mean, at this point I have to EMF proof my car. I used to not worry about it too much because I would go down to Manhattan a couple times a week. You know, I mean, I would deal with the oxidative stress for a couple days, but now, you know, if everywhere I travel, I have to be shielded in metal. It's 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 a discouraging world, and, and we're definitely gonna uh, do more EMF coverage stuff. I'm gonna try to get you guys some uh, protective fabric and various things you can use to protect yourself and your family. But in the interim, what you want to look into is aluminum mesh that they use for like uh, windows and sliding doors. That aluminum mesh that's used on the screen uh, that will block the radio wave signal. So. Uh, that combined with turning off your Wi-Fi devices, keeping your phone on airplane mode as much as possible, that will prevent you from getting sick, that will prevent you from getting radiation poisoning symptoms. Now, the most important thing that you do is you shield your environment, you shield where you're sleeping, your body's able to recover. Uh, if you're driving a lot, if you're commuting, you definitely want to shield your car. You want to make sure your work environment is a fairly low Wi-Fi environment. Uh, you know, if there's 
a couple points throughout the day, throughout the week where you do have to uh, expose yourself to very high Wi-Fi, that is okay. Under no circumstance would I want to raise children on anywhere but a farm at this point. If I had kids, if I had children, if I you know, had people I cared about, uh, I would be out in the middle of nowhere on a farm, hypothetically living a happy and healthy life. So we're gonna do more EMF protection, EMF coverage stuff. Uh, you know, regardless of where you live, if you have an understanding of this, if you know what you're doing, if you have meters, if you have protective devices, if you have a couple thousand dollars to spend, uh, you can protect yourself. You just have to be aware of it, how to do it, and um, you know the methods and the techniques they use to target you with this radiation. If people weren't getting radiated by all of these devices, people wouldn't be sick. People wouldn't get sick. They wouldn't have symptoms. You know, outside of the bad diet, outside of all the crap people are eating, what gets people sick, what kills people, what gives them cancer, diseases, is the radiation. When you combine radiation with the poor diet, that's where you get these cancers, that's where you get these diseases, that's where you get these illnesses. And the main reason they don't want people aware of this, the main reason they don't want people looking into this or understanding it is because once you feel it, once you know what a high Wi-Fi environment feels like versus a low Wi-Fi environment, they lose. If you put yourself in a low Wi-Fi environment for a couple hours overnight, if you sleep in a low Wi-Fi environment, then you wake up, call someone for 10, 15 minutes on your cell phone, put your cell phone next to your head, you'll feel like your brain is scrambled. Once you expose yourself to a low Wi-Fi environment and you understand how it feels, you understand how a human is supposed to think, react, low stress, feel good, free of anxiety, once you feel that environment, your brain will feel scrambled once you get high Wi-Fi. You can tell. It, it reduces your ability to think. You can't string together long sentences, long thoughts, long words. I've been on the road going upstate for about two hours now, and you can't really go two or three miles without seeing one of these new five grams towers. It, it, it's absolutely insane and disgusting how they are radiating people on every major highway for every step of the way. It doesn't seem like there is a safe way to travel anymore. And when you're under these high Wi-Fi environments, these high stress environments, you know, that mental state that it creates, that anxious, that reactive state, it makes it very difficult to focus on being positive, to focus on your goals and the things you want in life. So not only is in making you more susceptible to you know, fear-mongering, psychological warfare, what the modern media wants you to believe in. It makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to focus on your goals in life and what you want to achieve. You know, if you become aware of these things, if you're able to reduce them, then yes, you can make it easier, but you know, just seeing these towers on the way up here, it's just it's like so crazy. Like, how is it possible that you know, in these beautiful forests, all the trees that you see driving upstate New York, just vast and endless. Every two miles, they clunk to tower. And not even every two miles. I think it's like every half mile to one mile. They just clunked a bunch of, you know, five grams antennas uh, to blast you on your way up here. Um, I I'm going to do that testing. It's crazy. There's a tower right here. Uh, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. And and they position them so well that the trees aren't blocking them. You know, if this isn't a reality check, if this doesn't wake you up to what's going on right now and get you to do something about it, I really don't know what will. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Uh, hopefully over the next month or two, we focus more on you know, how to protect yourself from this stuff. You know, I'm sure most of you guys are able to just watch my past Wi-Fi videos and get an understanding of uh, how, to, how to reduce Wi-Fi in your home and that uh, you don't have to travel too much, you don't have to make yourself susceptible to these things. Uh, so I hope you guys are doing well and that you can focus on the positive. But uh, you know, as much as I don't like talking about this stuff, as much as it gives off a lot of like negativity, and uh, and, and you can get really pessimistic with you know thinking about this stuff all the time, uh, we do have to be aware of it and how it can affect us and you know how we can. Put ourselves in a position to you know take advantage of it in a sense that you know we know more than other people you know whether it is shielding yourself 
whether it is taking antioxidant supplements and uh, reducing other lifestyle stressors. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I mean, the main message here is to get people aware of what they're going on. You know, if you, if you, the more things you can point out to people, the more susceptible they are to waking up. You know, if you can point out them spraying the trails in the air, setting up the cameras on the highway, all of these towers every half mile on every major interstate, all the LED lamps in remote towns in the middle of nowhere. You know, what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do? They want to know where you are at every point in time. They want to be able to make you sick and control you at every point in time. And the worst thing you can do is not participate in their system. Whether that means you know shielding yourself using lead paint or aluminum, uh, not sending your kids back to school, not eating their poisonous food, you know, not listening to their health advice, doing everything you can. I mean, basically, if you do the opposite of what they tell you to do, you, you'll probably be healthy. Uh, so that's it for today, guys. See you soon.